Welcome to today's episode of Tech Teardown, sponsored by Mauser Electronics, where we look inside two interesting and similar electronic products and provide engineering insights into their components and design features. Today we'll be comparing two smart home speakers, the Amazon Echo Dot and the Google Nest Mini. Both provide Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity and allow you to interact using your smartphone or your voice for music, news, smart home controls, and more. But let's take a closer look to see how these products have been engineered. We're gonna start with the Amazon Echo Dot. So let's open it up and see what's inside. We look inside here into the package, we see the Amazon Echo Dot and the, the power supply. So let's take a look what happens when we power it up. We've got a barrel connector here in the back. If you look at the top here, we've got four buttons. We've got the plus and the minus, so those are for the volume controls. We've got one button here that does the mic on and off for listening to you. And then you've got a function button right there. So you now see the lights are coming on. As we wait a minute, eventually here, it'll start talking to us. We'll so here the audio comes out of the speaker system. Hello, your device is ready for setup. Well, now I'll start taking it apart and see what's inside. And what we need to do is we need to remove this rubber seal right here on the bottom. So if I just slide my tool here in along this and break the seal, I can then peel off this rubber gasket on the bottom and expose the holes for the screws. So now we've exposed the four screw holes on the bottom here. So we need to remove each of these to take off this bottom piece. Now that we remove the four screws, it separates into two pieces. If we look at the bottom in a little more detail, you can see there's an NFC label in here, uh, NFC ID tag, and then you have some of this white ring is just providing separation for the LEDs. On the bottom here, you can see this. Here's all the LEDs around the outside. I'm sure they're using white here to provide better reflectivity to get more light out of the device itself. Let's go ahead and plug this back in again, just so we can see the LEDs without the cover. There you go, you can see the LEDs. And then so they're changing colors and simulate emotion by, with a controller. So you got blue and green, and we've seen before that it'll change to orange as well. If we look over here on this side, you see there's a flex cable that is making connections here. You can kind of peel this back. And you can see that flex cable here. We can kind of separate this board from it. And we can see this board. We'll look at it in a little more detail in a bit. So on the back of the speaker mount, we see that there's two metal bars here. These are gonna provide power. There's two little spring mounted connections right here. Just little metal bars that are kind of spring loaded. So we got four more screws we need to remove here to separate the system. It's a slightly different head size for the screw. We can separate here the top cover from the speaker itself. So here's the speaker. And if we look closely here, you can see through this that this is where the sound's coming out right through there. If we notice, in this case, the speaker is mounted up, so all the sound is coming up away from the surface it would be sitting on. So we got the daughter board that was connected to the master board here by the flex cable. Inside the cover, we can see the connection here to where the buttons come through, so it allows some pressure through there. And here we have the daughter board. So you can see the back side of it. This is where the connections are to the buttons. So these are just mechanical buttons. There's a rubber seal on that. And here we can actually see now the four buttons. So these four spots here are the buttons. So these are just the mechanical buttons. I can feel the, the little bit of a membrane there. The other thing you can see here on the back of this is these four rings right here. So there's holes through the PCB because this is where it is allowing noise to get to the microphones. So there are four locations for microphones on this device, but there's only three of them actually populated. So we got one here, this little silver bar here. Here's another one, here's another one. And then over here, they've got an unpopulated spot for a fourth microphone. I don't know if they use this board for another product or they originally designed it for in case they needed four for better performance. Let's move our attention over to the main board. This has where most everything's happening here. On the top of the board here, we see we have a big metal case. This is for EMI considerations. So we're gonna pry off the, the metal cover. Again, change our screwdriver head. I just need a flat head here so I can get under it. And so we'll just work from a corner till we get that off. All right, we got three main chips here. We've got the, the square one here. This is the main processor. This is from MediaTek. It's an ARM device processor. And then the large one is DRAM from Nanya. The smaller one over here is some serial NAND flash from Kyoxia. 
And then moving down over here, we see the RF component. So this is a wireless SOC that does the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. From this, we have the two antennas. These are printed PCB antennas for the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. Now that we've taken this all apart and taken a look at what's everything inside of it, you really see the complexity and the engineering design that goes into all of this. From the white color around the LEDs, to the use of the daughter cord, even in the mechanical structure of how this is designed to allow the sound in, to interact with the buttons. And this is a really complex design for something that is a consumer product that's pretty cheap. And it's interesting all the things you have to do. Even the heft of this speaker is pretty impressive. Now that we've taken a look at this product, we'll move our attention over to the Google Nest Mini. Open up the box of the Google Nest Mini, set that aside here. And it looks very similar. We got the puck here and then another barrel connector power supply. It'll be interesting to see over time if they move these to USB-C with all the initiatives there. You might notice here, oh, we see some LEDs lighting up through it. There's no buttons. There's no nothing on this to say where we should push. The lights are coming through this kind of fabric material. So this is the second generation. Now we can now hear it coming on. Hi, to get started, download the Google Home app so on a phone. We're or not gonna download the app but there is some interaction here on the sides. We'll see that when we open it up, but the buttons are over here. Before we tear it apart, you might notice here that there is just an old fashioned mechanical switch on the bottom of the device. So as we look at the back, it's not obvious how we're gonna get into this thing. So there's just this little rubber piece that, that's hiding the screw inside here. So we'll get this pried open and then, there we go. Pull that apart. You can see there was a little Flexible connector here to connect to this small daughter board on the bottom. So that's for the barrel plug, so the power supply coming in there, and the mechanical switch. So you can see the mechanical switch moving right there. So in this case, there's not much on this small daughter board. Everything else is hidden under the speaker case. Four screws to get the speaker off. It's interesting here, the speaker is facing directly into this plate here. So that's kind of an interesting decision here because most of the sound is in being directed right at this solid plate here. And we have more screws now to take out. It's a very solid construction. They obviously mount these very well to keep everything firm and secure since these are just a consumer device and they're likely to be bounced around. You may note that some of the surface components like this big capacitor are, have to be let through because they just don't have enough room for everything. All right, now we can pry that out. We see here some residue, the, the thermal paste is connecting this. So this is just acting primarily as a big metal heat sink, probably helps with EMI as well. You got a foam gasket here that aligns with the metal casing ring around here. Again, this is gonna be protecting uh, all of the main device from the EMI. Similar to the other device, you know, you've got some chips inside here, that, you know, the main processor. They've got some thermal tape here under that thermal paste. We can kind of pull that back and then we can see the devices underneath. This is carrying the heat away. In this main section, the, the big square chip, this is a Synaptics SOC. This, this is the main processor for the device. And we have two what appear to be identical chips here from Nanya. These are some DRAM chips. So unlike the other one, there's no big flash chip here. So they must be relying on the flash embedded inside the SOC. All right, so as we talked about at the beginning, there's touch buttons on either side. These are kind of hidden over here. So there's kind of a tape over the top of that. Let's see if we can get that off to expose what's going on underneath here. So it looks like there's probably a big metal ring, probably for a kind of a ground plane for the sensor. And the sensor's inside of there. We've got three kind of metal cans in the corners. So these are the microphone ICs. So they're mounted here on this side of the board. And then we'll see here in a second, the sound's gonna come through the board to the microphone input ports that are on the other side of the board. So there'll be holes on the PCB under these devices to let that sound come through. All right, let's get the motherboard out of here. Before we look at that, we can look at the top cover. You can see through here, so there's four places for the LEDs so that lets some light go through that. Now we have the two-sided board. We've talked about some of the components on the top side. And as we talked about the microphone on the bottom here, you can see the holes where the sound is being let through. 
Now, in this case, they've put the wireless SOC that does the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi on the back side of the board from the main processor. So that's a little bit different. And then we see the antennas here. So we've got two antennas on the side here. See the path that the signal takes out to each antenna. And then interestingly, here on this side of the board, it looks like they have a dipole antenna. I'm not sure really what that is being used for. So they, they appear to have a third antenna here. Here, like we've seen on the other boards, there's a little bit of a metal spring here. That this is gonna be connecting into some kind of ground connection on the system. Now we know from powering this thing up that there are four LEDs. You can see those here right in the middle of the board. And there's this black separator. Again, this is just keeping the light from bleeding through from one light to the other. So with this Google board, we see that the, the main board is very similar to what we saw with the Amazon board. I mean, really complex designs, really packed well in, even the mechanical structure. I mean, everything is very carefully thought out from how they put things on the daughter boards to where they position everything here and the application of the speaker. One of the big differences is the Amazon product uses two separate boards. You got the main board and a pretty complex daughter board on the Google product, most of the stuff is on one board. There's very little on the daughter board, just power and that mechanical switch. We saw the design differences that sometimes one of them is using mechanical switch plus capacitive touch, and the other one was using some membrane switches. So it's interesting to see what design decisions they make and how they kind of cascade through it. To me, one of the most interesting design decisions was how they place the speakers and they get the sound out. On the Amazon, the sound you know, is directed directly out the, the openings on the top of the device. Google did it a little bit differently where they're driving the speaker down into the cover. The sound comes out through the side. So it's reflecting off that plate that we saw earlier. In both of these products, the functionality is very similar and a lot of the components are the same. But as we look at it very deeply, we see that they have made some different design decisions that affect not just how it works electronically, but also mechanically and how you interact with it. So it's very interesting to see what these teams have done differently and what they've done the same. But again, for low cost consumer products, the quality of the engineering is really high level, both from the electrical side and the mechanical construction. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Tech Teardown sponsored by Mauser Electronics, as we give you an insider's look inside interesting electronics products. And if you're looking to learn more or purchase the ICs or the components that we've seen inside these products, I would encourage you to head over to mauser.com where you can find data sheets and other detailed technical information. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again soon at the next teardown.